Hello there everyone, I'm UXW Bill, and what you're looking at is the American Power Conversion by Schneider Electric Back UPS model number BN450M. In case you're not familiar with this product, I'll sum it up by saying that the age of the disposable uninterruptible power supply is finally upon us, although many people have treated them as disposable items for years, judging by the number of units I pick up that have never had their battery changed even a decade after, their, after they were manufactured. And people wonder why the batteries blowed up in them like crazy. Now I am going to unbox this on the video here, but that's not the reason why I'm making this video. I'm very curious if this unit is as disposable as American Power Conversion would have you believe, because the owner's manual says no way, no how to replacing the battery. The only way to do that is to supposedly send it back to an authorized servicer, and given that American Power Conversion no longer performs any kind of service on these little consumer grade units to the best of my knowledge, I would imagine they just recycle the dead ones they get back and send you a refurbished one if it happens to expire during the warranty, or you actually decide to pay them to repair it, assuming that's even an option. So, let's go ahead. <coughs> Excuse me be a wonder if I don't choke. Let's go ahead and open this thing up. I did have the box open earlier, so I'm not sure why this uh, seal is giving me grief here. It's only been a day since I opened it, so maybe it managed to cement itself back down, but a man with scissors is not to be trifled with. So we'll go ahead and pop this out of here. While I will admit to having opened it, it was only to make sure that everything was in here and accounted for. I should probably test this thing before I plan on doing what I'm going to do to it. Which, as you may have guessed, is to tear it to pieces. Just to find out what it looks like inside and how replaceable the battery may or may not be. So I guess that what we'll do real quickly here... We'll just unwrap the power cord. Plug it in somewhere if I've got an open outlet down here on my workbench. I should probably take the, uh, take the plastic wrap off of it. They have redesigned these units in recent times. Get rid of the box. We don't need that anymore. They've given them a much different form of visual styling than they used to have. And this bigger unit is actually equipped with ventilation holes on the sides. Now, there's a little guard on the plug here. Looks like I do have an open outlet over here, but I think I'll probably have to unplug my electric fan. And then I'll have to make sure I've got this turned around properly. And then I'll turn this thing on, and oh boy, do I ever expect it to yell about my not having connected the battery to it. It hasn't yet, but I expect... Yep, there we go. There, it just bricked its self-test. And of course, as usual, although they have added alarm muting features to these, including an option to silence the alarm without having to install any special configuration software, it's still not possible to make the unit shut up when the battery is faulty. So, I don't know what kind of battery chemistry they utilized in this unit. I really have to wonder if it might not be something other than the typical sealed lead acid brick, because there are lithium-ion battery-equipped uninterruptible power supplies out there on the market today. I think CyberPower was the first big name to do one. But American Power Conversion has one as well. I'll get the box back up here in the form of the BGE50ML, which is just for backing up network equipment. This one is based on a lithium-ion battery. And I'm just kind of curious. I mean, this unit does have some heft to it, but that's probably the result of the transformer inside it. I wonder if maybe we could see anything through these vents. I kind of have my doubts, and right now I don't have a flashlight down here. At least I don't have a real flashlight. There might be one in a multimeter right here. Wait a minute, I've got a better idea. Here we go. Here's just the perfect thing. This is a little USB light. These things are amazing. They cost, I think, a dollar a piece. They are worth far, far more than that. So we need something to power this up with. Here, here's a little battery pack that might even be charged. Now, as I remember it, this battery pack doesn't actually stay turned on. Look at that. That's doing something interesting. 
I wonder if this thing is trying to perform some sort of detection to see if it should power up, if there's a device like a cell phone attached to it. This thing is not famous for staying powered on if it doesn't have a significant load on it. And as we'll see when I get my uh, current meter out here, which will cause it to turn on, interestingly enough. I hook this up. You're driving those poor LEDs pretty brutally. Hopefully this thing will stay on. Let's, let's see if we can see anything through those holes. I don't, I don't think we can. It looks like there's some kind of plastic behind them. Yeah, I can't really see anything in there. All right, well then it's time to break out the screwdrivers. What kind of screwdriver would this take? It's probably a Phillips. Oh, let's see here. Screwdrivers. Got the Hazard Freight cheapies out here, which aren't too bad, apart from the fact that the uh, incredibly cheap blow-molded case doesn't really hang on to the tools, so every time you open it, you get to play tool bingo. What's going to fall out this time? Okay, it doesn't even look like I need a particularly uh, deep screwdriver. I do have one that's like two feet long. It's for great for opening boom boxes and stuff like that. So here's what we're going to do. I'm blithely assuming this is the right size. It must be close though, because I haven't had it jump out of the threads yet. This unit's actually manufactured in China. I'm a little surprised by that. Years and years ago, American Power Conversion was doing most of their manufacturing in China, but it seemed like the quality control just wasn't there. They used to manufacture a number of the larger, uh, larger smart UPS line there. And I remember more of those things died than any of the others made in the United States, in the Philippines, in India. And then they stopped making them there. It seemed like they shifted most of the production over to India. Of course, they don't make these in the United States anymore, which is truly unfortunate. I'm just loosen the bottom of this. Let's see if it'll come off. I wonder if the top's supposed to lift off. Oh, there we go. And look at that. Look at what's in there. Now, I wouldn't want to short any of these screws out on the casing, but I think what we're going to find is that this is a conventional, come on, get off of there, sealed lead acid battery. And that was probably what I was seeing behind this ventilation grill. Yep, that's all in the world she is. Just a little 12 volt, four and a half amp hour battery. These things are about as cheap as dirt, cheap as chips to replace. And assuming that the microcontroller in this thing isn't programmed to go bananas, whenever it loses power, or if it loses critical settings from its memory when it loses power, you probably can actually replace the battery in one of these. Of course, everything in here is built down to a price, and this is why I always recommend people go with something a little higher end from American Power Conversion's product line, because the only recourse that these inexpensive units have when, the, when a power problem occurs is to go to battery where the larger ones have an auto transformer inside them that can actually adjust the line voltage up or down as necessary, boosting or bucking it, and thus they can do so indefinitely without having to use up the battery. Plus, if you load one of these things up to the absolute nines, it's not a good idea. It is enormously hard on the battery. It wears them out very quickly, and, and running them right up against their limits is also enormously hard on the built-in inverter. So I've answered my question about this. I've also taken a look inside it. Let's see if I can lose all these screws out of this bottom plate here. Get them somewhere where they won't fall on the floor or fall into the unit's circuitry and cause a short circuit. But in the meantime, well, I certainly thank you for having watched this video. I hope it was interesting and informative to all of you out there in the viewing audience. And as always, I certainly look forward to hearing what you have to say in the comments. And for anyone who's wondering about the stuff in the background, those are actually two inexpensive digital clocks from eBay. They actually have a proper timekeeper chip on them, unlike the last one I built, the SH-E879 model. And 
the one that's in the case works great. You plug it in right now. Comes right to life. There's today's date. I started my day of the week numbering from Monday, so that's off by one. There's the current time. And, of course, it'll tell you the room temperature, although I'm not sure how accurate it is. This other one has red numbers. And it would almost work. In fact, it does work, although it's a little bit unstable. But they shorted me one twenty-two picofarad capacitor. So I can't work with that one yet. And I don't think the seller's going to make that right. Luckily, those capacitors are dirt cheap. I bought a hundred of them on eBay for $3, including shipping. So let's go ahead and just put this thing back together and see if I broke it. Now, of course, since it's not been designed to be serviced, it stands to reason that there could be hazardous live circuitry in here to which you can be exposed. It's also entirely possible, I think this is true even of serviceable smart UPSs and back UPSs, but I've never done it. It's also possible that this thing is sensitive to reversed polarity. So you might end its life that way. Right, let's see if I got that battery back in where it actually goes. I wouldn't bet that I do. This is probably something they really only intend to ever happen in the factory. So we'll put the power cord back in place. See if we can put the bottom panel on here. Which again might be a bit of a ballet. Because they didn't design this thing to be taken apart and serviced. And I probably don't have the battery positioned exactly correctly. So, that's where I'm going to end the video, because we're coming up fast on 12 minutes. Although, look at that. Just as I say something, sure enough, it falls back together. So, alright, where are the screws? There the screws are. Put them back in there. See if they're actually going to go into their threads. That one's definitely threading in. So the battery is actually replaceable on these, and it is a conventional lead acid type. Of course, now that I look on the bottom, I see that there is a, a notation that says don't put it in the trash, although you know the law is against people putting electronics in the trash. It's my carefully considered in that they haven't worked. I think people just, by and large, break the stuff up into smaller pieces and then put it in trash bags, thinking, perhaps somewhat correctly, that no one will ever notice. Right, there we go, now we got that thread in. That's why I turned the screwdriver backwards, in case some of you happen to be wondering about that. I wouldn't bet that the battery's in there 100% correctly. But close enough, it's, it's bowed out a little tiny bit. You can't actually wall mount this, which is a nice touch, but then you could the previous generation as well. So we'll plug the battery connector in here. How do we do that? I'm not sure how you do that. Okay, there we go. Just plug that in like so. And we'll see whether or not I manage to irreparably break it which you'll know about soon enough when I plug it in and all the room lights go out. Nope, I think it's happy. It should attempt to self-test here shortly. May not, since it might be able to sense that it doesn't have a load on it. Alright, well thank you as always for watching, and as I said previously, I eagerly await your constructive commentary.